Hey, how you doing? Hopefully you're having a great day. My name is Emilio from Digital Bike Computing and today we are talking about what are the differences between a server, a mainframe and a supercomputer. These are the three things that we're going to be discussing today. Before we do get into that, please remember as always to subscribe to my channel Digital Bike Computing, clicking on that bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. Today we're focusing on what are the differences between a server, a mainframe and a supercomputer. Let's firstly define what a server is. A server in reality is any sort of computer that can provide a service to a suite of other systems or other computers, servicing a particular product or a particular software or application. They can host applications on a physical uh, infrastructure, a physical piece of equipment or within a virtual machine environment. So just really think about of a server as a standard uh, home desktop computer, but a lot more powerful. They have a lot more grunt, a lot more CPU, a lot more RAM, a lot more uh, graphics processing power to be able to run better software and provide better services out to a network. You can actually install server software onto most computers, your home PC or your laptop, and it actually acts like a server. Generally servers run Windows Server uh, edition. So the current version being Windows Server 2019. You can also run Linux servers, different flavors or kernel versions of Linux. Uh, or you can also run these in a virtual environment running something like virtualization technology hypervisors uh, such as VMware, uh, Microsoft's Hyper-V or Citrix Zen Server. So what about the size? What is a server size? What does it look like? Uh, if you're thinking of uh, server hardware specifically, uh, servers can come in different uh, sizes, different capacities, or different form factors. Uh, you can get servers in a standard tower setups, which is sort of like a desktop PC tower, but a little bit bigger. And of course they, they're packed full of a lot more power, a lot more resources inside of them. Servers also come as rack servers, which is, a, which is one of the more common ways that you'll see servers. They're essentially rack based units, very, very large, long units uh, in one RU, two RU, four RU, eight RU size units. Uh, you've got rails attached to them and then they are racked and railed and screwed in to a server cabinet. The other form factor is a blade server. Essentially it can be different sizes. You would have combinations of these smaller blade servers uh, within chassis, which then make up multiple pools of uh, servers to be able to give you certain services for your environment and for your network. So when you go to any sort of data center, a comms room, a server room, this is what makes up the majority of that space. You've got servers racked across multiple server cabinets, rack cabinets, along with other things such as network equipment and storage in server rooms. What about the cost of a server? Well, a server can really vary in cost depending on how you customize it. Generally, a server can be customized the same way that your a standard desktop or laptop can be with the amount of CPUs and RAM and processing power that you want to actually include in the server. But commonly you'd find that servers would start in the low thousands, work in their way up to the high thousands, perhaps even up to 10, 20, 30, $40,000, depending on how many CPUs it's got, how many cores, the CPU has got and how much RAM has been installed on that particular server. The next one is a mainframe. Mainframes generally, they've been around for a long time, so they're generally going to be a bit older. Not always the case, but mainframes have been around really since the 1950s and they have built, custom built, to serve a particular purpose. They're very different to modern day servers as what we know them now. They handle generally large workloads, uh, large processing power requirements. These aren't commonly used today as much as they used to be, uh, but they are still in use quite regularly in, uh, in say the banking and then the finance uh, places, especially if you need some sort of dedicated device that requires a lot of processing power and a lot of data management. What about the size of a mainframe? Well, mainframes are large. Uh, they're not going to be the same size as a server. They're generally gonna be larger. Think about a full server cabinet. So a standard cabinet where you have multiple servers, one of those could be a standard size for a mainframe around the size of a refrigerator. 
They can be smaller, they can be larger. The processes inside are not your standard sort of processes that you may find in a server fleet of products. Some of these processes can be custom built and they're more of a niche market around the mainframe space. Generally containing more than one CPU, sometimes up to 100 CPUs within a single mainframe. So mainframes will not commonly run something like Windows Server, which is your standard operating system that you'd find in the server space. Uh, they generally will run some sort of a standardized operating system, perhaps something that has been built by the vendor, but you can also have custom built uh, versions or kernels of Linux as well as ZOS. The applications or the services and the software that run on mainframes generally cannot run on standard conventional servers. They have been custom built for the operating system and for the hardware that is uh, being hosted by that mainframe. As I mentioned previously, a lot of these mainframes have been around for a very long time. They are generally being phased out. A lot of organizations who do have them are moving away from them opting for servers that have a lot more grunt power with versions of Linux that can provide the services that they are, that they need, but they still need it in certain industries. Now the cost of mainframes is a lot more than a standard server. A server being in the thousands, a mainframe can get into the tens of thousands, into the hundreds of thousands, really depending on who the distributor, who the manufacturer is, and how custom built that mainframe has been for a specific purpose in an organization. What about supercomputers? The term sounds amazing. What are these magical devices? Well, as the name suggests, these are supercomputers. They're not a standard base computer, a standard base server or mainframe. Supercomputers really generally are in a league of their own. And similarly to mainframe, supercomputers are built, custom built, for specific purposes. They can be used for things such as research or for scientific purposes, something that requires a lot of number crunching, a lot of smarts behind it, a lot of processing power to be able to crunch numbers and gather as much information as quickly as possible. You generally will not find supercomputers in your everyday business or organization. So places that can include these could be things like defense agencies, other examples such as university specific universities, um, supercomputer laboratories that are specifically built for the purposes of research. A very common use of a supercomputer is for space research, going out and discovering what space looks like, things such as AI, artificial intelligence. A supercomputer's internal pieces are insane. These can have thousands and thousands of CPUs inside of them, and they can even total up to millions of cores, depending on exactly what the purpose of that supercomputer is. So this is just in a complete league of its own and would blow away any form of standard computer at home, in a workplace, even a server or a mainframe. Supercomputers also generally run some form of Linux kernel, sometimes custom built for that particular supercomputer. Computer. So what do these things look like? What are the size of these things? Think about you walking into a server room, into a data center. You've got rows and rows of what look like their server cabinets. Their cabinets housing multiple servers or multiple mainframes. Well, no, these are potentially one single supercomputer that looks like a pool of computers. What about the cost of these things? Now, similarly to servers and mainframes, these things need to be custom built. These things can take years and years to build a lot of manpower behind them to be able to build it, to design it, to project managing it. So these things can go easily into the hundreds of thousands and into the high millions, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for various types and designed uh, supercomputers. At this current stage, the world's fastest, most powerful supercomputer in existence is a supercomputer that is based out in Japan. It's called the Fugaku supercomputer. This piece is insane. It is so big, it is so powerful. It costs over 1 billion US dollars to set up and, and get all up and running. It has only recently taken the title of the most powerful supercomputer, surpassing the number two, which was the Summit computer based out in the US. Like many other supercomputers, this amazing piece of machinery also runs a kernel custom built version of Linux. So that is my summary on a server, on a mainframe, on a supercomputer. 
Hope you found it helpful. Uh, hopefully you learned something new. Let me know below in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful for you. If you want me to record any other videos around this sort of topic, let me know below. As always, remember to like my video as well. And most importantly, helps me and it helps you to keep in touch with what's going on by subscribing, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with my video releases. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.